I dare you to hire such a caregiver. To test the patient's recovery, he poured water on his leg. Have you had enough? When feeding the patient, he went straight to his eyes again. Oh, oh, oh. When shaving the patient's beard, he turned the patient into an old man, then a noble, then a dull man. When bathing the patient, he washed his hair with lotion, washed his feet with shampoo. Such a troublesome caregiver, but the patient enjoyed his accompany. In the end, they also became lifelong confidants. This is a true story. The patient's name was Philippe. He lost his wife because of an accident. Another accident also caused paralysis from his neck down to his toes. He had to hire a caregiver. After interviewing all kinds of people, he didn't like any of them. Then a black man appeared. Philippe liked him in an instant. His name was Driss. He was outspoken that he was not looking for a job. He also told that the purpose of coming here was a rejection certificate so that he could get compensation for that. He was also honest about his status. I just got out of prison. I was a gangster. With that, he also chatted up the beautiful female secretary. Philippe smiled at that. He didn't know why this abrupt guy made him feel so relaxed. He decided to hire Driss to be his caregiver and told him he could come to work the next day. Driss was surprised because in his cognition no white rich guy was willing to hire blacks to work for them. When you got home, he wanted to share the news with his mother but in exchange for a burst of curses. His mother was very angry. She hadn't seen him for six months. Driss must have done something bad. She told him never to go back to this house again. Driss had no choice but to come back to his old path. The trough of life also made him feel very lonely. The next day, Driss came to Philippe's house. The housekeeper explained his duties and went to clean up his room. Looking at the luxury king-sized bed and the separated bathroom, Driss couldn't help but compare it to his house. The five square meters piece of land was the home of 20 people. He did not hesitate to take the offer. After a brief excitement, he got into work immediately. Though Driss was smart, he didn't get used to the job yet. He put Philippe in a wheelchair, almost making him fall. Buttons in Philippe's shirt were always odd. Though Driss made a mistake every time, Philippe patiently encouraged him. Gradually, Driss's clumsiness worried the housekeeper. Even Philippe's friends told him to be careful of this black man, saying that blacks had no sympathy at all. Noticing the suspicions of the people around you, Philippe was angry. I just want this. Without compassion, he always forgets that I'm paralyzed and hands me his cell phone. He treats me like everyone else. On the first day at work, Driss just wanted to talk to the secretary. Though he was very unreliable, he also had good characteristics. He didn't act like other caregivers, putting Philippe in the trunk. He lifted the wheelchair aside and helped him get in the passenger seat. He made Philippe feel the long-lost roar again. He also helped Philippe fix the friendly settlement of neighborhood relations. Come and have a look at this notice. Read it out. That's clever. Now remind yourself that all your life. Sure enough, the wicked needed the wicked to treat. For the rest of the day, as long as Philippe felt bad, Driss would arrive as soon as possible. In his own way, he soothed Philippe. He refused to sleep until Philippe went to sleep quietly. Philippe had a breathing problem that night. Driss hurried over. He knew it was a side effect of the drug, so he immediately put Philippe in a wheelchair and went out for a walk with him. It was four o'clock in the morning. Seeing that Philippe got better, Driss took him to the cafe. They talked all night until dawn. This was the first time Driss had got involved in someone's life. Driss also knew the secret that Philippe was hiding. He could still have sexual activities. From then on, the relationship between Driss and Philippe was getting better. Driss started to be more careful, especially when he treated his leg. Even Philippe's secretary also recognized Driss' efforts after many days together. Under Philippe's persuasion, Driss had also changed a lot. He learned how to draw, reading books. Sometimes he helped Philippe with his letters. Until one day, Driss accidentally found Philippe had a pen pal. Under pressure, Philippe confessed that the two had been communicating for six months but they hadn't met yet. Driss was in a hurry. There was no such love in his dictionary, so he found Philippe's pen pal's phone number. He was about to call her but Philippe refused at first. He wanted to take it slow. Just a few days after, the two started to talk in full swing. One night, Driss saw Philippe's daughter crying in the room. She was bullied and humiliated by her boyfriend. Driss went straight to the boy to give him a lesson. Since Philippe was unable to protect his daughter, Driss would help him fulfill this responsibility. One day, Eleonore, Philippe's pen pal wanted to meet Philippe. Driss was so excited. To get Philippe to go on a date, Driss carefully picked clothes for him, but Philippe began to feel inferior after he calmed down. He was afraid that when Eleonore saw him like this, she would turn her back to him. On the date, Philippe still flinched. The moment Philippe went out, Eleonore passed him without noticing. Philippe took Driss on a private plane, coming to the place where he and his wife had parachuted. To Philippe, this day was the day he felt the most alive. However, the good times did not last long. When they got home, Driss's brother came to the door. He was in trouble. He knew that Driss was living in wealth now. Driss had a big quarrel with his family. Seeing this, Philippe knew that it was time for them to part. He had no choice but to find Driss, telling him wholeheartedly, take care of your family first. The next day, Driss left. 
the secretary came to say goodbye to him. Driss was looked down on before, now he was respected by everyone. He came out of the mansion, when he saw someone's car block the door, this time, he didn't use violence but politely asked the driver to park somewhere else. After returning home, Driss took on the responsibility of the family, helping his brother out of trouble, helping his mother with the family burden. He got a job as a driver. Because of the art knowledge learned from Philippe, he easily passed the interview. Philippe was not so lucky. The death of his wife and the departure of his friend made Philippe, who was already depressed, be more wasted. He changed his caregiver one after another but he couldn't find someone like Driss. They dressed him in white every day, treating him like a baby. It seemed to remind Philippe all the time that he was paralyzed. Philippe's illness got serious that night. He shut down everyone. The housekeeper had to call Driss for help. Soon, the two old friends met again. Through the glass, Driss still saw his inner depression. He took Philippe out all night to relax. They were by the sea. Philippe looked at the sea. The long suppressed depression was finally released. Looking at Philippe's messy beard, Driss had his way with it again. This, this, how about this? Then Driss took him to the restaurant by the sea. Philippe was relaxed. At this time, Driss told him, Philippe, I can't stay for dinner. Why, but you won't be alone. Take it easy, it's okay. What, you can't let loose this time. This is a true story. Philippe's original name is Philippe Pozzo di Borgo. He is the vice president of a company. He is also the heir of two French families. In a parachute jump, he caused high paraplegia. Since then, his life had entered the darkest hour but the appearance of the French Moroccan caregiver Abdel Selou had changed his life. They redeemed each other. One was calm and the other was cheerful. Two people who were the world apart finally crossed each other's path, becoming a lifelong friend. Until now, their story still touches thousands of people. True friendship is not hard to find. Just keep looking around you. That's all for today. I'm Harry. I'll see you next time.